Greetings, fellow travellers of the deepest, darkest corners of the internet. Welcome to the Recluse of Random with me, Logan Shepherd Scally. I bring important news. What? This tea is cold. And this is my somewhat eccentric brother, Caleb. <laughs> now, we've prepared a variety of sketches uh, for your viewing entertainment, so uh, I guess without further ado, let the comedic sketches, sketches of comedic nature, commence. It's more sketches and stuff. Show programs. Yeah. This is the reclusive random. The time is now ten past nine. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the highest comedian on the block, Bob Roberts. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you too. So guys, so, did you hear about that 911 biz? <coughs> I mean, like some people say it was some kind of like setup, but <coughs> like who cares about what temperature steel mounts at, right? I mean, we can still have one heck of a time there. I mean, it must have been real fun for the firefighters, right? Ooh, look at my look at those toasty fires. Perfect temperature to toast these mellows. Mm. Cooking these mellows on the fire. Mm. Mm. These tasty mellows. The asbestos really adds to the flavor. <laughs> uh, uh. <coughs> what? Get him off! <laughs> Let's look at the papers today, right? <laughs> okay. Fight racism in the UK in George's name. George, George Floyd's sister on his legacy and her reaction to his killer being convicted. What a riot! <laughs> Boo! Boo! <laughs> Boo! City's Boo! police force to play sweeping investigation. Boo! Oh, what did it get? Must be all dusty back there. I mean, of course it needs a good queen. Imagine that. Boo. I imagine a Janet. Uh, yeah. Hey, you need a Get queen up. of the police station. It's you too messy. Boys like horrible. Yeah. We're just Boo. gonna sit here and eat donuts. Shut. <laughs> Get it off. Boo. It is much worse this time. Ferocious Boo. second wave is causing devastation. <laughs> it ain't a good time to go surfing Boo. this year, is it? <laughs> oh, shut up. and die, won't you, you horrible oh. well, human about human that. being? I mean, do you hear about that <clears throat> James Bulger kid? I mean, oh. I don't know why they didn't get the <clears throat> drug people to investigate that, because he was, because <clears throat> he certainly got stoned. <laughs> get him! <laughs> get him off! The man's just sick, perverted, <laughs> disgusting. Go on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, fuck. oh fuck. fuck you, as well, mate. Fuck. Oh, piss <laughs> off, mate.
Well, I hope you're enjoying the show so far. But of course, we've got to live, haven't we? So uh, I guess it's time for the ad break. Carrie McGregor's advertisement showroom. It's only three miles past Cheshire on the M6. Welcome back to the recluse of random. Now we've got some more brilliant sketches up today, and uh, yeah, well, I just Hope you enjoy them, as they say. The show must go on. Have a good time. Everybody loves bananas. They're delicious, nutritious, healthy food. But what if they're not from Earth at all, but are actually... Creations from space. Imagine <clears throat> this, if you will. A banana is much more adapted for humans, much more suited towards them than most fruits or vegetables. Uh, you imagine, think about it, the seeds, they're vestigial, they barely even exist within it in order to provide more flesh for eating. And if you notice, the uh, five uh, sides to the skin, which are perfectly suited for the hand to hold it, the five grooves match the human digits. And so I'm thinking <coughs> such a thing, it can't possibly be made by humans. I mean, these bananas have been grown since time immemorial, uh, and yet they have to be reproduced by cloning. You uh, cannot, due to the vestigial seeds, they cannot reproduce in the standard manner. In, uh, in the uh, Egyptian times, around the mid era of the Egyptian times, uh, there was the, this thing that it came down from a, a, a spaceship, and uh, and. Uh, Tutankhamun was in it, and everyone, you could see from his weird shaped head, and like, he brought these things to the people, and he was like, hey, I have brought wisdom and true items of great, great, great. I have one here, look, you can, you can make anything with a banana principle, you can make anything, you can, you can make a book, here, here, I have a book I made with a banana principle. Uh, I, I didn't make it. Uh, my friend made it. He he charged me for the book. He said, "Hey, hey, buddy, I made this with a, a yellow banana principle because they're yellow. Uh, that's why they're like bananas." And 
He said, I'm, I'm going to sell you this book, and I'm so proud of it. It's made by Banana Principle. I don't know the art of making things like the Banana Principles. Uh, and the Chilton Car Moon gave, gave them the Banana Principles. And their society, it, it, it got better. A significant amount of tension is being placed on Tutankhamun Moon and how he may not have been human at all. I guess you could say that, um, uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, it's the same, it's the same colour, uh, and, uh, uh, Tutankhamun Moon claimed it was a banana principle, and that's how we got bananas. It's quite obvious, isn't it? The, his head is strange shape, uh, sort of elongated, and his appears to be a more emaciated physique, as well as large eye sockets. Now, does that not match the description of most extraterrestrials uh, in reports of abductions and the like? I mean, <clears throat> from my perspective, uh, it seems most likely that Tutankhamun had uh, extraterrestrial DNA within him. I have another book. Uh, this is a proof that the government are trying to corrupt because, look, here I have a book and you can see the title. And this is the government trying to tell us that the banana principles are evil. But this, this is true. This is what Tutankhamun made. He was an alien because of his skull. And, uh, he was, uh, yeah, he, he made the banana principle. He brought them down in his spaceship. People, it, there's eyewitness and, uh, it, well, there's eyewitness uh, by one person. There's loads of pictures uh, that nobody's ever seen online, uh, and it, it proves it. As a matter of fact, most of the ancient Egyptians may have even been in contact with extraterrestrials. There have been many uh, reports in history of contact with beings uh, coming down from the sky and elaborate chariots, the likes of which uh, have never been seen before or since. Now, obviously, the natives of the time uh, assume they were gods. I mean, what else could they be? They didn't look human. They had technology more advanced than anything we could ever make. And, uh, but consider this. They may have been visitors from another planet. Not supernatural or magical, simply more advanced in technology and science. They say in the old Egyptian times you would have to uh, plant a banana principle and you would have to sow a banana principle into that seed and uh, it will grow into b banana principles, free banana principles. But then this evil, evil alien race came to try and steal the b b banana principles. And the Greek, the, the, the Greek pantheon uh, was actually the Egyptian pantheon. And though that pantheon of gods were aliens, and they tried to steal the banana principles. Unfortunately, those in power seem to be intent on suppressing the discovery of bananas and extraterrestrials. We can't really say such a thing would be true that it's merely conjecture at this point but I wouldn't put it above them uh, le let's face it there are certain vested interest interests within the fruit industry to assume that well only these producers have the power to make them it's to maintain this corporate monopoly think about it anyone could come into contact with these so-called gods and learn the secrets of banana making so then we can all share the gifts of bananas their high vitamin and potassium contact i mean c consider this you could you the the potassium in them makes them slightly radioactive if enough research was put into it we could all have limitless nuclear power uh, that's clean and environmentally friendly and of course the automotive industries and the and the oil industries would not 
particularly like to see that happen, would they? Yeah, it's the government, you know, men in black. They they try to shut down the show, like, but, you, you know, we, we're telling the truth and they don't like it. And here I have evidence of the banana principles. Uh, you can read it all in my new book. It's about the banana principles. Hang on, isn't that just the book your friend made you? No. No, it looks the same. <clears throat> Join us next week on Ancient Aliens when we investigate Switzerland. Was it an alien that assembled the cantons together? Yes, it's the show you've all been waiting for. It's the wacky misadventures of Nicky and Zuck. <laughs> uh, Mark, sorry, we've uh, got a bit of a problem here. Uh, basically, what happened is uh, Australia, they are... They've changed the law, basically, uh, so that now whenever a news article appears on Facebook... We have to pay the money to, well, whoever runs the website, which means we have to pay lots of money to, uh, well, Rupert Murdoch. Oh. Is there any way we could avoid this? Well, we, I've tried to turn public opinion against it and maybe and try to lobby the government a little but the problem is uh well Rupert Murdoch pretty much is the Prime Minister of Australia he's uh very entrenched in that stuff and he's not very happy that he's losing relevance and there's no way I can avoid this uh, apparently not no I mean well, I guess you could refuse uh, change Facebook so that in Australia it refuses to, uh, well, give us any, uh, uh, put the headlines up so that there's no links at all. That way we don't give any money to anyone. Good idea. One of mine as well. Uh, but, 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 but. Fine. I'll go tell them to implement it. You better. No, it didn't work. It didn't work, Mark. It's a public relations disaster. Yes. And you're supposed to solve it. Yeah. Well, you're my PR man. But we, we're going to have... Well, looks like we're going to have to negotiate with News Corp corporation you're the negotiator I'm not I'm the PR man you're a better negotiator than me uh, when I negotiate I look like a brick uh, fair point uh, so go and negotiate again Right. Did something happen? Uh, yes. What? Uh, Facebook agreed to reinstate the, uh, the articles. A great victory for me. What? This is a failure. This is far from a success. Rupert got what he wanted. I don't understand a single thing about Facebook. Explain it better. The, well, basically, uh, the links are back up again. We, we lost. You mean you lost? Uh, like. Look, I, I can explain. Uh, 
Look, Rupert's kind of hard to deal with. I had to deal with him back when I was Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, you failed. Look, Again. It's nothing I can do. I posted a big long article on the Facebook website explaining why it's a bad thing. Well, I guess you'll have to make yourself useful then, won't you? How? Get me a coffee. Yes, sir. My assistant is late. I'm sorry, ladies and gents, but that's all we've got time for today. So, without further ado, I guess it's goodbye. And maybe you'll wait until the next video. Who knows? <laughs> yeah.